Okay, so I think it's time to start. It's my pleasure to introduce Giovanni, who will present us his forthcoming book. And, uh, well, I'm quite curious in what he's going to, to tell us in just 15 minutes. <laughs> and then we have lots of time for, uh, for questions. I thank you, uh, Francesco. I thank uh, the organizers uh, for letting me promote my uh, Opus Manium, that is this book. Uh, I finished it. Uh, I do not have it in concrete, in reality, because of problems not due to me. Uh, the incredibly big publisher like Oxford University Press is making a lot of problems. Anyway, they started to promote it. This, uh, at least the cover is that, and you find some information on that side where you can also pre-order it. Uh, I, it took me many years because uh, the vision and the following mathematics uh, that I propose in the book is, uh, I would say, radically and also totally different from usual use. It is impossible to give a summary of uh, so many years. Uh, just a little sign is uh, that book will be around 600 pages. I don't know exactly how many because they are making such a mess that uh, <laughs> even the number of pages is changing. Uh, today I do not expect to be able to convince anybody uh, for the moment. Uh, I only give a panoramic view and then uh, as Francesco said, uh, 15 minutes, uh, and then I answer to questions. Uh, this is uh, the best way, I learned that this is the best way to make you feel the novelty. Otherwise, if you see slides, such uh, as slides, uh, you just feel it as any other talk, uh, and the underlying novelties are hard to grasp. Uh, in the past, uh, I just warn you one thing. Uh, in the past, uh, it has often happened to me to be the only one to keep a certain view or uh, support a certain proposal. Usually, I can give several examples. Usually, in the long term, uh, it turned out that I was right. Uh, I believe this time also will happen, even if the bet is uh, the highest of all, it is higher than all the other bets uh, put together. The only, uh, the only doubt uh, is whether I will see it, but <laughs> anyway, I'm sure. So, let's uh, move on. Uh, first, uh, there are two slides. And uh, um, I can show more slides only if uh, it is useful when you put questions. But I will try to answer directly on the blackboard. So the main claim is that mathematics is all made by humans, nothing above nature. I know what I mean. I, uh, and uh, I, what's the way of saying in English? I mean what I say, <laughs> up to the all consequences. Uh, usually, quickly to understand, just think that it is a good tool for survival. It is uh, a cultural product uh, similar to uh, music in the sense of music scale, musical scale, economic systems, social rules, uh, for instance, the way women are treated and conceived, 
uh, view of the environment uh, exploited or respected and things like that that are all part of culture. Uh, mathematics, like all this, is uh, the result of a natural and dynamic process. By the way, uh, the comparison with music uh, or economic system shows uh, that it can change. We can change uh, our attitude on those cultural uh, tools or products. Uh, this vision, I, my claim, yields a safer and richer foundation and lets uh, many mathematical innovations to emerge. I will try to give a hint to, uh, to some of them in the second slide. Uh, the main change is uh, we must pass from uh, given truth to uh, careful management of the information we acquire. So, uh, whenever uh, in doubt, even if I use words like true, this is true, uh, what I need is uh, we have a certain information. And in case of doubt, it's better to think in that terms. So, uh, since uh, we, uh, an immediate consequence is that we want to maximize information. And to maximize information, we need not to assume certain axioms that kill it, that destroy that information. Typically, these three axioms, but also other, for instance, I do not put here proposition as sets, as in multi but typically these three, uh, we don't want uh, law of exclude the middle because we want to preserve positive existence. Uh, we don't want a power set axiom, if x is a set, also the power of x is a set, because we want to preserve uh, a notion of set, uh, or call it any other way, anyway, a notion which is inductively generated from another notion which is not. And PSA kills uh, that distinction, but also no axiom of choice, even axiom of unique choice, because we want to preserve effectivity of operations uh, and want to distinguish functions uh, from operations. Um, if uh, needed, I can explain that. So the minimalist foundation um, is a way to respect as much information as possible. So those three, as well as other, like uh, I mentioned, proper sets, uh, are not assumed. And the aim is not just to, to be able to say, oh, there is a joke uh, for kids, uh, uh, oh, I can ride my bike without a hand, I can ride my bike without uh, two hands. It's not because of that, but because uh, uh, we want to respect as much information as possible. Also, we want to build knowledge from below, that's why I mean minimalist, we want to have a modular approach and not something given from above. In particular, a modular approach allows one to have provable consistency. Uh, benefits are control for proof assistance, consistency uh, without passing through formal system, only if you uh, want a rigorous proof, but the system, uh, the, the, so not the, not the formal system, but the attitude is clearly consistent to me. In any way, uh, it's not, uh, all the known paradoxes cannot be formulated in, in this new attitude. Uh, well, I must uh, a little bit explain this. Uh, the main thing is that set uh, is different from collection, and so set is inactively generated and collection is not, and set typically n 
and collection, typically power of n. But what is power of n? You need me to say what is a subset. A subset is substantially as a property or a predicate. And uh, in this way, a subset is not a set. And in this way, uh, you do not have uh, extensionality, like in the classical approach, extensionality with no domain, but you just define subsets. And, and, and so the Russell paradox simply does not apply, does not produce anything. <coughs> then the same for most, uh, it was Poincaré who said that uh, all paradoxes are due to some kind of issues. Uh, okay. Uh, and computational content is preserved also, and which is uh, good for applications. Many people ask me, at, at first, uh, in particular, not now because they see many papers, but at first uh, they ask, uh, can we do mathematics uh, with such a weak foundation, I don't like to call it weak because it's very strong in resolution power. So, uh, minimalist foundation. Uh, and the answer is certainly, not only you can do as much mathematics as you wish, not all the given mathematics, I'm strongly against one of uh, the slogans, for instance, by Bishop, saying that uh, any result of classical mathematics is a challenge to the constructive mathematician. I believe that a lot of people, uh, sorry, a lot of results of uh, classical mathematics should just remain there and uh, uh, we, we should not have them in a properly constructive uh, framework. Uh, to the contrary, uh, a lot of mathematics uh, is, uh, can be done, which is better than before. Uh, better, since I know it is a subjective uh, opinion, let us say I feel good within the mathematics developed over the Minimalist Foundation. I, f I have emotions which I never had in the other foundations. So that's a very <laughs> concrete way to say that it is different. Let us see what are the novelties. Perhaps uh, seven minutes, 20 minutes. So uh, the main novelty is that topology becomes uh, a discipline with a strong foundational value. It is not just one discipline among many others, it is the discipline which allows to clarify lots of things, in particular the distinction between real mathematics, computation and similar, and ideal mathematics uh, dealing with spatial intuition, but also many other things. Uh, Okay. Uh, in particular, this shows uh, that doing mathematics and uh, uh, studying its foundations are intertwined in a very strong way and it's almost impossible to separate the two. Uh, one novelty which uh, started to emerge uh, almost uh, 30 years ago, around 95, is that if you change uh, from the notion of set to a notion of uh, basic pair, so two sets uh, linked by a relation, which is uh, at the base of the notion of uh, topological space, as I will immediately explain. If you pass uh, from a set to this, this allows to discover a lot of structures, logical structures behind, that were hidden by uh, impredicativity and the classical logic. If you behave predicatively and intuitionistically, immediately they emerge. In particular, 
Uh, however funny it may look to you, nobody explicitly, as far as I know, I'm ready to change my opinion if you give me a reference, a written reference, not just words. Uh, nobody explicitly pointed out that interior and closure are perfectly dual one of the other, not complement, not negation, that is only classical logic. In intuitionistic logic they are perfectly dual one to the other, meaning you exchange exist with for all and with implication and, and, and so on. And uh, similarly, a symmetry between points and the drawing I often make is something like this. I call this uh, the left side, the right side, or the formal side. This, uh, uh, and the funny thing is that up to this moment we don't assume any, anything distinguishing x from s, so it's perfectly symmetric. And this, uh, uh, the symmetry between the formal side and the concrete side also uh, is very interesting and never noticed. It allows to find point-free definitions in a systematic way, with a clear method. Uh, concrete spaces, uh, topology can be seen just adding a notion of convergence over this. So, in a sense, it turns out that topology is just applied logic plus treatment of convergence. And uh, uh, concrete space, these are called basic pairs. A concrete space, the space is just a basic pair plus uh, one expression of the fact that this set S is an index set for neighborhood that give a base for the topology. So, very clear definition. Why point free topology is necessary? Because this situation, x a set of points, is very rare. Uh, the interesting cases, like real numbers to begin with, uh, points form a collection, not a set. Uh, a lot of people complain, including the referee of the book, uh, complain, why don't you want real numbers to be a set? Because I care about distinguishing in different kinds of information. You have no way to generate all real numbers. I want sets to be exactly generated. So, real numbers are not the same. Simple. Simple. I mean, it's uh, clear in my opinion. Uh, so, Points rarely form a set. The computational content, while, uh, while the base or an index set for the base, is often a set. Typically real numbers. A base is given by intervals of rational, rational endpoints, which is a set or set index. So, to maximize effectivity, we must develop as much as possible the point-free side. Easy. There is nothing to discuss, in my opinion. Simply, what is to be discussed are we willing to do it. I try to do it often, uh, often uh, uh, with difficulties. Anyway, we have shown it is possible to do it. You have... Uh, oh, uh, so we develop as much as possible on the point three side. What is the way to find uh, definitions? You simply start from uh, the case in which you have points, uh, like uh, concrete space, and see what is the structure induced on the formal side, and then forget points, namely express as much as possible of that structure without using points. So you will obtain a structure, which I call positive topology, where the cover means uh, A cover U means uh, that uh, every point uh, passing through the, 
the neighborhood corresponding to the index A will pass through the open subsets corresponding to the subset of neighborhoods U. And uh, similarly, for fish, so thesis X is points passing through A, and this is just a way to express that. Sorry, there is no place to put the joke. Sorry. Uh, and, uh, but a, a novelty is that I put this, and uh, the difference, the definition of this is this, with some novelties that I now explain. Um, as I said, X A is the extension of the index over points, uh, and X U is the union of all extensions. This is overlap, a new dual of inclusion. So this is a positive existential statement. And A fish U or A positive with U says that there is a point in A such that all its neighborhoods are in U. So it is a very positive way to say where the point X will be, that there exists a point which satisfies a certain kind of information. And this is very strong because it gives, uh, this corresponds to open, format open subsets, and this format closed. And this is quite another thing. Uh, the effectivity of point-free topology is nice in the fact that the cover, in most cases, is generated inductively, starting from something effective that we call axiom set. So a certain family of subsets indexed, a subset of observable indexed by A in S and I in a certain index set, I or a family variance of that. Uh, with, whenever you are given an axiom set, you can generate a cover and a positivity relation. You need to have an extra assumption that has been discussed uh, before. Uh, and that's it. The advantage of having stronger notions of point-free structures and also a stronger notion of uh, uh, topology, concrete spaces, means that you can fulfill an expectation by Grothendieck, so going back to 60 years ago, namely that concrete spaces can be embedded as a category into positive topologies. This was proved in 2008, and uh, I gave a talk in Kanazawa for the first time. It's not yet published, but uh, written somewhere, for instance, in a thesis uh, by Damiano Tornasini. Uh, ideal aspects are, is, so up to here, everything is computational, real mathematics. Ideal aspects are expressed as in ideal space over a positive topology. Ideal space means you take all possible ideal points over the positive topology and think. Uh, so I will intuitively you start from a given concrete space, go to the topology, positive topology induced by it go to the abstract definition without using points and now you go back and have ideal points ideal, ideal points over S and S we keep this because with ideal points we cannot reconstruct always cover and positivity and this will be the generalization and replacing the uh, rare case in which uh, points are given. Uh, okay, I'll stop. Uh, it is conservative 
namely you don't need consistency or so because uh, it is just a local idealization in very abstract terms uh, you, you show that the category of these uh, things uh, and the category of these are isomorphic uh, these are just obtained by some redundant information from them last question is uh, is all of this uh, uh, or will all of this become a new paradigm? Paradigm? Um, I don't know because it's not up to me and also not up to us. It is up to the community, so to say. Uh, it could be. Uh, it could be. A, you could look at it as a new paradigm or the completion of the classical paradigm started with. Uh, Frege, Cantor, Hitler, blah, 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 and uh, uh, without uh, the weak points. Anyway, a lot of future work. This, I stop here and I'm ready to any uh, question. The most difficult are the most uh, amusing because they're more engaging. <laughs> Not easy to summarize 600 pages of work <laughs> into two slides. Okay, so any questions or comments? Uh, probably silly question, but just to be sure that I understood. That in this place we have an, an 2s, 1 is x, uh -huh. which is a set, right? That is, is x and s are sets. Yeah, that's right. So you have a slide I mean, uh, Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So X yes. is, a, is a set and S is a set. Yes. And sorry, but what, what, what I don't understand what that you mean is an index set for a base. It means that we have to require if you have uh, uh, if you have a set of points and a set of observables uh, to require this to be a concrete space okay. is the same as requiring that the family X A subsets of X and X uh, of A in S where X A is the subset of all X such that X causes A so the image of if you take this family that must be a base for a topology Base, not for the sub base. So it must be closed under right. interception. Can you show us somewhere the, the contents of the book? <laughs> oh, the uh, no, I. Oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, we... I try. <laughs> I try. <laughs> it's something like 12 chapters. <laughs> Why? Yes. What pagina? What finestra? Scrivo un intero. Ok. So, so the book is real. <laughs> <laughs> it, it exists. <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, by the way, this allows me. Can it enlarge it? No, it does not work. Two fingers. No, it's not an iPad. It's a computer. On the trackpad. Here. Oh. <laughs> never, never realized that. Thank you. Oh, fantastic. I never realized that. So, apart, uh, there is a long uh, so-called uh, front matter because I need to explain mostly my way of uh, exposition which is uh, full with details, I go very slow because in this way when you read uh, you can absorb, even without explanation, the intuition behind the style, the intuition, and you see that it's all very easy No, it's, uh, I've experienced with students, students said even without 
previous explanation just exposed to the text, they could understand everything. Uh, so I explained this. I also explained that uh, it is uh, essentially two books uh, put together. The first book is uh, chapter one, and we will see chapter, uh, sorry, section 7.1. I explain later. And all the rest is uh, preliminaries, like in a general topology book when you do ZFC or similar. And then every chapter is uh, uh, one object. Why? How can I go? Oh, yes. You should be. I should. Command, command, woman. Anyway, I, while Pietro helps me, I go on. So, chapter uh, three is about basic pairs, all the structures, uh, uh, symmetry, duality, uh, isomorphisms, uh, and so on. Where do you want to go? Uh, previous page. Previous <laughs> page. Okay, this one. So the chapter on basic pairs. I show that uh, you define open and closed even before having a topological space, and that they are uh, reduction and uh, saturation and all the symmetries and dualities. And uh, I then uh, sort of uh, added preliminary because uh, I uh, study operators induced by a relation in general, which I used uh, in the following. And I see that functions are a special case of relations, uh, namely one in which existential and uh, universal pre-image coincide. I have a question. What? If you... No, no, I'm going on. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> then, uh, chapter two is... I'm still answering this question. <laughs> okay, but... Chapter two is uh, showing that uh, relations uh, forming a commutative square between basic pairs are the correct notion of morphism because they are exactly continuous relations in a standard sense. Relations, not functions. Mm -hmm. The case of function comes everything as a special case. Then I add convergence and study concrete spaces. Uh, there is an example, trees and pets, uh, that goes on in the whole book, five se sections dedicated to it, because it's the most important. And then similarly, uh, the category of uh, concrete spaces uh, showing that it is a commutative square of relations as before, plus a condition saying that uh, convergence is respected. So it speaks about, about objects or about morphisms? Yes, five, five uh, objects, uh, six. Uh, now we come... How did you do it? <laughs> Zoom in here. Equal differentials with Perfect. I learned. Chapter 7 begins with the point free structures, but before beginning, a long section, uh, this one, 16 pages, um, explaining why we should do that and the methodology with which we can do it. The methodology that I quickly said is see what is the structure induced on the formal side and take it as an axiomatic definition. Then you see that everything works. Uh, there are two big examples of uh, basic topologies, those coming from points, 
and flows coming from axioms. Uh, I call them dense and thick. Uh, thick are just inductively generated. Then continuous relations means uh, a relation that respects uh, uh, the cover and fish. We can go on. Thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> then we define the case in which the point free structure uh, satisfies some kind of convergence, and these are positive topologies. Uh, the morphisms are formal maps, which means that in the next chapter we introduce ideal points, a formal uh, <laughs> A formal map between two positive topologies, formal map S, is such that if you take alpha here and map it into S alpha, it will be an ideal point of T. In that sense, this is just the computable information, the effective information you have of the infinite degree object that is a mapping between ideal points. By the way, in this way you prove that Brouwer was right when he said every mapping is continuous. Because if you really know this to be a mapping, the only way to do it is that you have S and, and, and then it was continuous. And uh, finally, ideal spaces. And we stop here. Yes, ideal spaces, then the rest is uh, we can jump. Okay. I give uh, oh, spatiality and reducibility. Spatiality is uh, something Hugo should be interested because it was something he said in different mm -hmm. words. And reducibility is the dual notion that he also mentioned. So uh, you can get the uh, uh, Speciality and reducibility in all examples are very strong properties. For instance, if you spe specialize to uh, the risky topology, which is an example of positive topology, um, reducibility means uh, something like uh, the prime filter theorem connected to, and speciality I don't remember. Anyway, very often, speciality and reducibility are well-known properties. Okay, for That's instance, it. For instance, on trees, they correspond to bar induction. For oh, yes, yes. Speciality. On trees, uh, speciality is bar induction. Reducibility is, in a sense, uh, the definition of choice sequence. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, ideal point in the bare space uh, is a geometric notion corresponding to choice sequences. Ah, benissimo. And uh, there are some questions. One, question. one by Pietro. Yes, on the first chapter. Well, on the first two chapters. Uh, they are quite long, I see. And uh, you also mentioned that uh, in uh, your experience, you did some uh, tests on students, and students. Can, uh, with the help of those chapters? No, no. I never oh, gave okay. this chapter to students. Just I started from from second chapter. This chapter is okay. very hard to read because <laughs> okay. it needs uh, it assumes that you know the history of foundations. Okay, so my my question is, uh, who is the target of your book uh, if there is uh, one specific? Uh, At the moment, uh, graduate students uh, with some curiosity. Okay. And uh, I suggest that they can read chapter one only when they feel like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you suggesting it here or do you say No, no, I say okay. it uh, in the form, form, uh, front matter. Can you continue the contents? Uh, it is um, uh, hey, topological, I tell, I tell with words, topological systems uh, that means uh, you can embed all topological categories into these two big categories, basic and convergent topological systems, and overlap algebras, and uh, 
overlap topologies. Overlap algebra is uh, a structure, an algebraic structure coming from serious consideration of uh, these two notions uh, between subsets. If you algebraize those two, you get an overlap algebra. And uh, Francesco is uh, probably the, the world expert on overlap <laughs> algebra by now. And he can tell you, explain better than I do. It's easy that you are the only one. <laughs> uh, they work. They work, uh, and uh, you have a lot of nice uh, results about that. Okay, so and uh, that, that's it. And oh, uh, overlap algebras are so rich that you can do most of the previous content of the book in algebraic language. Any other question or comment? Yeah. It's maybe a bit technical question. These two operations, this triangle and the fish, uh, they are somehow dual to each other, right? Yes. Is this duality is formalized fully in the book or is it it's not important? Uh, they are dual abstractly in the sense that this is corresponds to a, just a different way of expressing it, a saturation operator. And this is uh, corresponding to J, which I re call reduction, which is a way to say closure and interior. I prefer new terms uh, because this corresponds to open subsets, so calling it a closure would be very confusing. <laughs> anyway, this is expansive, and this is uh, reductive. Okay. Monotone, even both. And the question? Uh, a curiosity, did you manage to put all you wanted to say in this book? Or do you have material for proceeding? Very good question. That's a very good question. With patience, just going through the thousands of pages uh, of notes uh, that I had and throwing away over a half of them, I believe uh, that a lot of uh, open questions uh, remain. Some of them I put in the book okay. as an open question. Okay. In the index uh, there is an uh, open problem and a uh, list of uh, perhaps uh, 30 or 40 open problems. Thank you. Some of them are not easy. So when they are not easy I call them future work. <laughs> Um, so what about the, uh, the logical system in which the book develops? So what is the uh, ground logical framework for if, the book? Uh, if uh, you mean the formal system, then it is the minimalist foundation. Uh, the only assumption is uh, the fact that if you start from axiom sets to define cover and uh, positivity, you need to believe that that produces a new proposition. And that is uh, we assume. And that is connected of course with uh, Pietro's uh, PhD thesis. Yes. So this possibility well, He that. used uh, this uh, assumption. Mm. Uh, so that is the, uh, laid out that in chapter 2 right, then? The, the yes. Chapter 2 explains the notion of set, collection, proposition, all in the minimalist form. Thank you. And also it gives uh, pre mathematical tools uh, done uh, again, repeated, to be sure that uh, they are all in the minimalist foundation. Mm -hmm. Plus induction and co-induction. Yeah. Okay. A curiosity, since you just mentioned uh, sets different from collection and subsets which are properties, the relation. I just realized, for me, a relation is a subset of a product, but... What, no, what well, mean? I don't mind. No, no, but I mean the relation up there of the, of the basic yes, yes. Relation is a proposition to two arguments. So it's a property? It's a property, yes. Yeah, okay. It is just, uh, I said, it is a subset of the Cartesian product, 
Yes. But since uh, I don't need Cartesian product, I no, no, sure. have to. Mm. In, in other words, uh, you take advantage of the difference between sets and collections, or all random, the time, or yes. in basic pairs, all the time. I'll make a comment uh, because Bishop was, was mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that uh, if you see the history of Trostra from '66, he, he was I had it at home. Yeah, <laughs> it's topology. Uh, it uses uh, negations all the way, and it's very hard to read. And uh, gradually, uh, you were maybe the first that re who realized that in order to do uh, topology in a fair way, you need to separate. You need to put the concept of open and close together. Because at the beginning for the I was I, I maybe I misunderstood. Who was the first? Maybe you. <laughs> no, I'm not the first. Who? Grayson and Trustra himself. Yes. And uh, uh, some other guy, they did not insist, but they said it. Okay, at least. Awesome. Okay. That closed must be defined independently in a positive way and not as a negation. Yeah. And also Bishop does this already in his book where, where he yes. defines neighborhood spaces. Yes. Yes. So uh, you have by putting positivity together with uh, the, uh, the covering in relation together, you manage to do it in your own way in order to avoid the problems by combining concepts with weak negation. That's the problem. Yes. Yes. And I avoid negation almost entirely. I think this is the most important. Uh, That's why the name, uh, at a certain point, Milly pushed me to change the name of formal topology. Yeah. And I had some resistance. And then, uh, after some insistence, I decided, OK, I changed the name. Then, after some thinking, positive topology. Mm -hmm. I believe it was a very good choice. Yeah. Because it summarizes uh, one, uh, perhaps the main peculiarity. Yeah. I think this is the main point. You can do the same thing in different ways, in different contexts, but if you want to do computational topology, you need to separate into it, the two. Not only together. that, not only that, but you can deal with the information in a better way. Yeah. One future work or open problem is to show that you cannot have the embedding of concrete spaces, uh, alias topological spaces, into locales, alias positive topologies, unless uh, you have the positivity relation. I'm, I'm ready to bet that. Not, not much, but uh, <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> okay, cool. okay, we have run out of time. So, thanks, thanks Giovanni.